If your database is small enough, it's not that difficult to do cross-referencing. Like if I want to look up the year for a part number, 2008, there's the column. And then for the cross-reference of the model number, 250, it's right there. Not too bad. But if you had a huge database, that could be quite cumbersome. So we're going to be using the horizontal lookup as opposed to the vertical lookup that we covered in the previous training video. The horizontal lookup will take the value that you want to look up and look up in the topmost row that you designate, which is going to be this row, find it and say, okay, here's the column. And then in the function, you designate the row and you'll get the cross-reference. So to get started, let's go ahead and insert it next to the label because that's going to be the resultant value of the horizontal lookup, the part number. So type in equals HL for HLOOKUP, and there it is. Looks for a value in the top row of a table or array of values or a group of cells and returns the value in the same column from a row you specify. So with the highlighted, hit the tab key to pop open the function, and it says, okay, the first argument is the lookup value. Either type it in or select the cell, as in this case, that contains the value, then hit comma on the keyboard to go to the next argument, that's in bold, and it's the table array. Now you can go ahead and type in the range, select the range, or in this case, since I already named the range as data, I can go ahead and type in D. There it is, data. With it highlighted, hit the tab key, and you can see it automatically selects my range. That's pretty slick. We learned that in an earlier training video on named ranges or naming ranges. Then comma to go to the next argument, the third one, and it says, okay, what row index do you want to return? Now, in the table here that's selected, the row that we want to specify, let's say, is going to be row 1, this row, to keep it simple. Now, according to the index, when you have a table selected, this is row 2. Microsoft looks at the first row, even though it's just for labels, as row 1. So to get the model number 100, we have to go by its index, which is row 2. So type in 2, and then hit Enter, and let's see if it checks out. 2008. Cool. It works. Now by default, it's doing an approximate match, the vertical lookup, saying let's do something that's equal to or greater than with what you're looking up. So for example, we got 2008. What if I go ahead and right-click on the column for 2007 and go down to delete it? So we've got 2006. Skip 2007 because let's say we don't have part numbers for that year for the models there. So if I come down here and type in 2007, hit enter, we shouldn't have a part number, right? Well, not according to the default vertical lookup function because it's going to do a comparison of equal to or greater than. Is it greater than 2006? Yes, but it's less than 2007, so it goes back to the lower number here. And it says, let's look for this year for what we designated the model number 100, which is row 2. So to avoid errors, because you don't want to look up something if you don't have it, to be able to say, okay, let me give you this part number when you don't have that year at all, to go ahead and double click and edit the horizontal lookup function and go at the end or just before the last parentheses. So you can see by default the bold there, we're in the second to last argument, that when you hit comma on the keyboard, you get the approximate match, which is the default if you don't select it, it's still going to do an approximate, equal or greater than the number that you're looking up. Or if you need an exact match, go ahead and double click on that so it's false, meaning that we're not doing something approximate, it's got to be exact, hit enter, and then it brings up not applicable or not available. So that way we don't hand out a part number for another year and give them something that they don't need. Now you can also do this for text. So if I come up here and I type in the word, let's say red, and we want to look up for red, then go ahead and type in red, hit enter, and it finds it. Remember, it's looking in the same row because we haven't updated our function yet. That's going to be row 2, which is the model number 100, and it brings it up, it checks out. Now remember, it's got to be in ascending order. So when you're doing horizontal lookup, it's got to be from smallest to largest. Or if you're doing text, it's got to be alphabetically from the upper end of the alphabet, the A's, all the way down to the Z's, because if not, you're going to get erroneous results. Now, you don't have to have an exact match, so you can double-click on this and get rid of the faults there. And you can just leave it the default, which, if you don't put anything there, is going to be an approximate. And what's approximate of red to red? Well, there's nothing that's greater than red, like blue, or less than red, which is yellow. I'm just making that up because there's no such thing, so you can leave it as approximate and not do an exact when you're looking for text. Let's go ahead and hit undo a couple of times. In fact, many times we can get back to our deleted column, 2007. And if you wanted to change the year for the same row, 2004, of course it updates it, so it's still referencing the same row. But if you want to reference a new row, like a different model number, 150, remember that's the first row according to Excel's indexing, so 
with our table that we're referencing. There's row one, row two, there's row three. So I could double click down below, type in three for the row index, hit enter. And that's for the year 2004. That checks out. But to me, that way it could be quite cumbersome. Another option that you may want to consider is if that's for the part number 150, let's just type in 150. This could be for 200 and that could be for 250. And you can just keep on going down. You get my drift. So what I have to do is go ahead and take the function here and copy it down to those below. But as you recall in earlier training videos, when you hover over the bottom right hand corner, you get the black cross and you click and drag it down to copy and paste it. The references for the functions are going to be relative unless you tell it to be absolute, constant, don't move. Because if I come down here and double click, since I copy and paste it down one row, it's going to shift everything down one. Now the cool thing about this is, is that it didn't shift my data range down one because it's still referencing the same named range, data. That's not going to change. But if I didn't have the name for that range and I typed in cell A4 colon J15, then it would shift down. And instead of A4, it would now be A5 the next row. So that's the good news of using named ranges or giving a range your own name. So the only thing that I have to worry about when I copy and paste is the reference right here. This is E17, but since I went down one row, it went to E18, hit the escape key, went down two rows, this went to E19. We don't want it to do that. So let me hit the escape key, go back to the original HLOOKUP here in that cell. And because we're going down row by row, I just need to put a dollar sign, an absolute reference symbol in front of 17, which is for this row. Don't move. Just stay always in that row. When we're going down, copying and pasting that is row by row. If we were going over column by column, we'd say stay in that column. But since we're not going over column by column, I don't have to put a dollar sign in front of the letter E to, to tell it to stay in the E column. So the dollar sign in front of the number 17 for row 17, hit enter. Then go ahead and select the cell, lower right hand corner, black cross, double click really fast. And then after that, I just need to go ahead and update the referencing for the rows. So 150, remember, there's the first row, second, third, 150 is the third, 200 is the fourth, so double click and change it from three to four, hit enter. Then 250 would be consecutively number five. And so let's see if it checks out. So when I type in 2004, there's the 2004 column. So if 150 is 11, 32, 70, it checks out. So if I go ahead and update this to 2005, isn't that great? I don't have to go down below and double click and update the row number. If I'm looking for a part number in another row, I can just go ahead and type in all the models here and then type in one year and it'll bring everything for each one of those rows, those model numbers. Of course, if your database is huge, then you may want to consider having another worksheet so your database could be on worksheet two and then on worksheet one, just have this here that you can type it in and reference all the data on worksheet two. Because when you double click right now, it's looking up everything on this worksheet. To get the data on another worksheet, then with it selected here, all you have to do is go ahead and type in, if it's sheet two, you can type in sheet exclamation point. If that's the name of your worksheet, sheet two, or whatever the name of the worksheet is, your operator, which is the exclamation point sheet two, and then go ahead and type in the cell range A5 through, or whatever it is, or hit the escape key. What might be easier is with it selected, come up here and click on FX. It opens it up and then you can go ahead and select the table array, which is referencing my named range data. Click on the collapsible dialog box button so it collapses, then you can select your other worksheet. And let's go ahead and delete that here and then click and drag and select your range, hit enter to pop it back open. So it's referencing sheet two, exclamation point, and then the range, click okie dokie. We're gonna get the raspberries because I've got nothing there, so I'll hit undo. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos, and for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.